Hello, my name is Jesper and welcome to this channel. In this video, I'm going to do an overview of left-sided heart failure. We've already done a video overview of heart failure and if you haven't seen that yet, you can click on the pop-up link here. Left-sided heart failure is a form of heart failure that is due to some defect or pathology within the left side of the heart. To understand the pathogenesis of left-sided heart failure, we first have to know the basic anatomy of the heart with the blood circulation. We know that the left side of the heart receives oxygen-loaded blood from the lungs, which the left side of the heart further then will pump out into the aorta into the systemic circulation. An important term to remember when we think about left-sided heart failure is backflow. This is because left-sided heart failure causes blood to back up into the lungs, which leads to respiratory symptoms and fatigue since there will be an insufficient supply of oxygenated blood into the body. When blood backs up into the lungs, this then will also increase the intrapulmonary pressure and can lead to pulmonary edema. The patients will often be pale, cyanotic, with cold and clammy skin. They might complain of tiredness and nycturia. Nycturia means frequent urination in the night, and this is due to the heart being able to relax in the night, and urination will increase, urine output increases, due to the edematous state. We might see hypertrophy and dilatation of the left ventricle, and sometimes the ictus cordis, or apical impulse, will be displaced and then felt more to the left. We separate between left-sided heart failure with or without intact ejection fraction. The ejection fraction is a measurement of how much blood the left ventricle pumps out with each contraction. When there's a reduction in the function of the ejection fraction, then the ability of the left ventricle to contract properly is reduced and we say it is a systolic failure. This is because we know that in the systole, this is the phase when the blood is being ejected out into the aorta. On the other hand, when the left heart failure has a preserved ejection fraction, then there will be a problem with the ability of the ventricle to relax and we call it diastolic failure. When this is the case, on examination, often an S4 galloping sound can be heard, which is an important diagnostic tool. The etiologies of diastolic and systolic differs as well as overlaps. But in general, when we think of systolic etiologies, ischemic heart disease, chronic hypertension and dilated myocardiopathy comes to mind. When we have diastolic failure, there can be numerous etiologies, for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathies, valvular diseases, aging, amyloidosis, fibrosis, sarcoidosis, constrictive pericarditis, and hemochromatosis. The treatment will vary depending on what stage of the disease it is in and what the causing etiologies are. Lifestyle changes, medications such as ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, beta blockers and diuretics are given. Aspirin and nitroglycerin sometimes also, depending if there is a coexisting angina. Some patients require surgical intervention such as coronary artery bypass, valve or even heart transplantations also, depending on the situation in the patient. Complications can be vast. Patients can experience life-threatening arrhythmias, edema, respiratory problems, further heart failure leading with backflow, leading to problems of the lung, and then as a consequence, but backflow further into the right side, leading to right-sided heart failure. That was it for this short overview of left-sided heart failure. Hope it was helpful, and please subscribe to our channel if you like it. Hope to see you again.